Men on the front lines. 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 We call for these mighty men of valor. The Lord put a vision in my heart for a new movement amongst men in the body of Christ. The Lord says that I'm going to make champions out of those who would gather unto me. And I believe what men on the front lines will do. And I see it going into the nations. He's going to raise the bar among men. It's time for heroes to arise. I'm Robert Hodgkin, and this is Heroes Arise, Men on the Front Lines live social media broadcast encouraging and equipping you so that you can arise as the hero, the warrior, and the champion that God created you to be because you're important, you matter, and you have a key role to play for the kingdom in the earth. So thank you for joining me this week. And I gotta tell you, I have missed you. I know we haven't been on the air the last few weeks. I was overseas ministering in England. It was a great time, but I didn't get to connect with you as much as I usually do, and I really appreciate you being here with me this week. Wait until you meet the special guests that I have for you. You're gonna be blown away, but even more than blown away by the stories that he's gonna share and the revelation he's gonna release, you're gonna be equipped and empowered to continue to walk in greater and greater intimacy and manifestations of the heaven, of the heaven in the earth. Before we get to that, a couple quick announcements as always. I want you to mark your calendars for September 23rd through the 30th because that's when our Frontliners Outreach Tour is going off in Cambodia. And men on the front lines, women on the front lines, seniors on the front lines, and children on the front lines are all coming together in Phnom Penh to do outreach into the community, into the slums, to bring transition and change and transformation to that region and to bring the reality of the glory of the gospel of Jesus to everyone we meet everywhere we go. If you have a heart for the nations or you want to see women and children set free from the sex trade and the oppression of the enemy, if you want to see cities and nations and communities changed through the glory of the gospel and through your prayers and through you ministering to them from the heart of God and walking in more of his presence, power, and personality, come with us to Phnom Penh, September 23rd through the 30th. You can learn all about it at patriciaking.com. Go to that events li link and then Wonder Events. You can go and find Frontliners Outreach in Cambodia September 23rd through the 30th. You'll help change a nation, and I promise you, you will also be changed in the process. Another event we have coming up for you is our next Man Camp. That's coming up October 5 through 7. And if you've been looking for a chance to unplug from the busyness of life and get away and connect with a great group of guys in the great outdoors and have an incredible time with God, I want to invite you to be a part of our next Man Camp. As a matter of fact, our producer, Jonathan, has worked to put together a video for for you showing you all about man camp so buckle in for that we're going to throw to that in just one second and then when we come back i'm going to introduce you to our very special guest this week it's a chance to get away unplug you get to relax plus you get to connect with a great group of guys who are on fire for god that's what man camp is man camp was absolutely incredible you know you make great friends from across the country joking and having a good time it's amazing because what's the it seems like strangers, but you come and really it's guys that are on your same walk of life. It's the brotherhood. We had an opportunity to learn about the kingdom, learn about ourselves. Incredible teaching. It's really edified me, encouraged me. Being in the midst of all these men that are on fire for Jesus. This is my second man camp now, and, and honestly, I can't imagine missing it. We're hosting this man camp in Prescott, Arizona at a gorgeous campground. It's October 5 through 7, and you can get all the information you need by going to menonthefrontlines.com. Guys, I want to invite you to man camp because it's, it's life changing. You got to get here to man camp. I recommend this for anybody life changing. Nothing is like it. I want to see you the next man camp. Yeah, come to man camp to just experience what God has for you. It helped me take that leap of faith. This propelled me further, faster. I'm going home empowered. It was life changing, seriously. You need to be at the next man camp. It's a life changing experience. This is a life changing experience. Um, 
the, the breakthroughs here are incredible. It's going to be amazing, and I can't wait to see you at Man Camp. So I do, I want to see you at the next man camp. And for any of you amazing ladies out there who are watching, what a great gift to give to your husband or your son or your pastor. Just help send them to man camp so they can connect with a great group of guys in the great outdoors. All right, are you ready for this week's special guest? Joining me this week is Kevin, and I, I pronounce your last name different every time I say it, but it's Zadai, correct? Or yeah, Z yeah, that's good enough. Oh, good. Zedai, Zedai, yeah. <laughs> You're so incredibly gracious. <laughs> you know what blows my mind, Kevin, is 36 hours ago, I, I, I didn't know who you were. And over these last two days of getting connect with you and spend time with you, I have been so blessed, not only by your ministry and your revelation, but by you. You're a great guy. And I think, I think it's important that we, we share examples of real men of God with our audience. And I want to thank you with all you have going on that um, you came into the Valley for an uh, extended series of meetings. And yeah. you've taken time out of your schedule to come on and share with everybody. So thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome, Robert. I'm so excited. Of course, anything that has to do with Jesus, I'm, gonna, I'm excited to talk about him. So. Well, and, and that's one of the things we sent out even with the teaser on, the, on this week's program is anything to do with Jesus. Oh, my gosh, have you encountered Jesus? You were sharing about how you had a 45-minute face-to-face encounter with Jesus in heaven where he revealed so much to you, including some of the secrets about how to live from the kingdom while in the earth. But before we go there, share with our audience about your encounter with the Lord. I mean, face to face. Come on, that's incredible. Yeah, it, it actually started It started a long time ago when I, when I was 10 years old. I actually had a visitation. I got called. But I didn't, I wasn't born again. So I actually wow. had a visitation, and that's how it all started. Okay. Okay, so just so you know, okay. it, it kind of started. So you have a history of seeing but I, yes. and, okay. But not a heritage. Right. I had no, nobody to coach me, so I kind of left to go. But I would feel a, a presence around me at times, and now I know it was my angel. Wow. Okay, so he walked me through. Anyway, I, I got born again at 19, and then when I... Uh, got hired with a, with a, the airline and was working there, I went in for an operation and I just had to have my wisdom teeth pulled. Okay. But they have to put you under and, um, and it's a, it's a, you know, at least an hour long type of, right. okay. Right. So they didn't monitor me, but they gave me uh, too much uh, of the oh. nitrous. So the anesthesiologist that was monitoring me, they didn't have me hooked up to a heart monitor. So what happened was uh, I, I found myself outside my body and I couldn't get back in. So I watched the operation for a couple minutes and then Jesus came in the room. So you were standing outside of your body yeah. in the operating room watching everything that was going on. Yeah, and okay. I couldn't get back in because I didn't know, you know, how do you get back in your body? Because <laughs> I've never done that before, you know. <laughs> so I, I, uh, I saw Jesus and he just started to teach me. And he then took me and we went away. And then. So when you, you saw Jesus, he walked into the operating room where you were. Yes. And, and what did he look like? He was about uh, five, five foot eleven, okay. five foot ten. Uh, he, he had a, a, a white robe on, wow. and he has a lot of hair, really long hair, and it, it was down his back. Uh, I would estimate between two and a half to three feet long. Oh my gosh! He looked like a lion. He looked the, his mane. It was like a mane. Okay. But uh, he was he was very very much a commander as well as my friend. Oh and wow! I don't know how he does it, but he seems to be able to manage himself in any situation. So, so approachable, but also great authority. You could yes, okay. and I would never um, want to get in his way if he was going somewhere. If you weren't in agreement with him, he would he would just ask you to step aside. Wow. He's he's more he's more. Um, to me, he was the most misunderstood person on the earth. That's what I told him. I said, you are the most misunderstood, misrepresented person. I told, that's the only thing I ever said in to him. In what way? How, how, is, how did that struck you? But in what way do you feel he's misunderstood or misrepresented in the earth after having this face-to-face -face encounter with him? Okay, well, think about this. You're, you're outside your body, and you're with him now. And you're looking back at a world that's not even as real as the world you're in now. Okay. And you're looking at the person who actually created you. But before he created you, he thought about you. So when he breathed you in your mother's womb and all this process happened, then you find yourself standing before him and then you realize exactly what God's intent was for your life. Well, so then he was much more than the, even though the words of the Bible, if the Holy Spirit isn't there to help you grasp the realities of it, it's going to be short of what the reality was. So that's okay. how I, ex I explain it is that Jesus was much more. Oh, okay. Uh, and, and he was, uh, he was uh, had a command about him, and he wasn't weak. 
So yeah. everything uh, he said, he, he, he was almost had a grin on his face because he knew the future, but it was his now. Wow. So he's looking at me and he's thinking about the day that he thought of me and breathed me into my mother's womb. And he's talking to me at the same time about things that I needed to know about the spirit realm okay. and how to live in both realms. Okay. So he spent 45 minutes teaching me how to live in both realms. And you were standing in the operating room the whole time or did he take you off to someplace else while he, he was would, teaching he, you other things? We would go other places, but, okay. but uh, what, what, this is what's so amazing about his authority. He would just talk about a place and when he would go like this, a panoramic view of it would come. And the destination, are you ready for this? The destination would come to us. Oh my gosh. We would be standing stationary and the destin he had such much command that when he went like this, his intent in his heart would command wherever we were supposed to go to come and bow to us. Wow. So we would go all these places on the earth and Without in different spots. Yeah, and wow. it, that's how, how much authority he has. So as this is going on, because I, I, you had shared that for years he hadn't released you to, to even talk about the encounter with him, let alone what he taught you. Yeah, but almost he, 23 years. Almost 23 years. That's incredible. Yeah. And I want to honor you for your obedience because there's so many <laughs> people you. that, I mean, it would be hard not to talk about that. And oh, that if yeah. You, and you, you, were, you, you were such an obedient, loving son and friend and servant that you, you honored that request to his. But now that you're able to release this, first of all, do you have any indication of why now he wants you to release it? What's going on in the spirit inside of space and time that he's saying now is the moment for this to be released? Well, he explained to me that holiness is, is not what we actually have, have conceived it is. Holiness is ownership. He, he takes us, he buys us out, and then we're his private stock. Okay. And once he does that, because of ownership, our behavior changes. And part of that behavior is, is that we're, because we're set apart, is that then we only do the things that he wants us to do mm -hmm. when he wants us to do it. So he had pulled me aside as his private, own, uh, private stock for a time that had not yet come. He had full intention of releasing me at a certain part of the race. So that time when that season came around, because everything in God is cyclical, it's not like the Greek thought of linear. Oh, right, okay. So it had come around to the season at this time where there's people coming forth now that have been in obscurity, but they've been trained they're in obscurity. Ah, yeah. okay, all right. So if if that's you, if you feel like you've been obscurity, if you in obscurity, if you feel like you've been hidden, I want you to be encouraged because I know that can be challenging, especially when you know what you've been given and what you're supposed to release. And sometimes we can be like Moses, where in our enthusiasm, it's like, okay, I get it. I get what you've called me to. I get what I'm supposed to be. I'm the deliverer of my people. I'm stepping out today and doing it. And it didn't go real well. You know, he ends up killing the Egyptian guard, and then the next day he talks to his people, and his people say, well, what are you doing, man? Are you going to kill us like you did the Egyptian? So for 40 years, it must have felt like him, to him he's on the backside of nowhere, and he has very little to show for. He, he doesn't even have his own flock of sheep. He's looking after his father-in-law's flock of sheep. But the Lord shows up in the burning bush to remind him of, hey, with me, not a beat has been missed, and you're still the deliverer of your people, and now is the Kairos moment, and if you, if you move with me now in what I've given you, you're going to go in even greater power, greater authority, greater manifestation and see greater fruit. So this is that hour. I want you to be encouraged because I know how the enemy works. I know how he can discourage. And sometimes when the timing isn't what we expect, we can let those lies of the enemy get in to make us feel like God's not there, he doesn't care, it's not gonna happen, but the truth is he was bringing you forward to this moment, which is the perfect Kairos divine moment for you to be taken from the sidelines to the front lines, just like Moses, and you're living it. Yes, and it's because I essentially had to learn to yield and, and he actually told me, it says, he said, learn to yield instead of build. Mm. And so, like, I was building myself up in the most holy of faith, praying the Holy Ghost, but I also... Now, you were praying, because we've been visiting for two days yeah, now. You yeah. were praying 8, 10, 14 hours a day in tongues. Yeah, and I was still working at a Fortune 500 company, so I was, I was praying in tongues under my breath, uh, where I could just hear myself okay. the whole day. And so I had 13-hour days. And I would just learn to pray. I would pray four hours a night in my hotel room every night. I would seek the Lord. And I asked the Lord over those 30 years that I was in a different city every night. Actually, every hour I was in a different city, but at night. Because you were working for the airline. Yes. Yeah. And I, he would tell me, he would tell me, I want you to take four hours a night and pray in tongues in, in, in every city. Wow. 
And so when I, when I finally retired last year, I said, Lord, I just, I just really don't understand. Why did you have me at this airline? Yeah. He said, every city that you prayed in tongues in, he said, you own that now in the spirit. Wow. So now when we go to those cities, we have yeah. miracles. We have like a, a move of God at break out. And he said, you did your homework in the spirit. So Isn't decades later, decades later, when now he's called you to what we think of as more traditional ministry, although you've mm -hmm. always been in ministry because ministry really is releasing the kingdom into the earth through our life. And it's a lifestyle, yes. Yes, and, but you, it, while you were working a full-time secular job, right. you were being obedient to what he was asking you to do. And you didn't even fully realize in that obedience mm -hmm. what he was setting you up for over two decades later. So now everywhere you go, you have authority in those places because you were obedient decades before. That's right. And that's Amazing. why everyone needs to be encouraged that whatever they're in, they need to find that, that faith rest where they enter in with God in a relationship in, in their situation. You see, God wants to deliver people out, but he wants to walk them through it. A lot of times you rob yourself of the character building uh, yes. uh, process when you, you want deliverance. See, you want deliverance out of a situation. Now, I'm not talking about being delivered from the devil. Right, no, I'm right. I'm talking about uh, your situation. You know, just so you, if I could share uh, uh, just a short Anything story. Anything you want to, yeah. Um, one, of those, one of those nights, I was in the city of New Orleans, and I didn't want to be in New Orleans. In fact, uh, nobody wanted to be in, on that overnight. And so I, I by, not by my choice, I got called out and I, I, was, I had to take somebody's place. So I ended up there and I was complaining to the Lord. He said, okay. He said, I want you to go down this street named Williams the whole way down and pray in tongues. And I want you to come back and I want you to go up this other street okay. and, um, and pray in tongues in that one too. And it took over two hours to do all that. And, and I never got to eat. Oh my god! I had flown for 13 hours, but this is what happened. Yeah. That was 19 years ago. Now, I just met a lady who is a minister in our town and where I turned around, she showed me where she lives and she yeah. got saved in this house oh my goodness. 19 years ago on that street so where quite, I turned around. Quite possibly yes. the night you were praying and mm -hmm. turned around praying in tongues, you brought heaven into the earth through your obedience and through praying in tongues and opened the door for her to know the Lord. Yes, yeah, so and not only oh. that, the other street that he told me to go yes. up is where she has her healing rooms where she prays for people to be healed, wow. her offices. Wow. We, we, so we don't know the, the ways of God in our lives amazing. like we should, but we should learn to yield in our situation and let the Spirit do His work. And it yes. took, think, it took 18 years for me to find it, uh, this out. Like, I just found this out last year. You know, for you, whether it's 18 years, 18 days, 18 hours, 18 weeks, whatever it is, you're going to have something similar, is you're going to come into an understanding that what we think of, and this is what amazes me, Kevin, is the kingdom so often is released in profoundly powerful ways that are very, very easy to miss. I mean, when the Messiah himself came, it came in such a humble, he came in such a humble way yeah. that everybody but his mom and dad, three wise men, and a handful of, of livestock yeah. missed it. And yet it's the most amazing thing that's ever come into the earth. Here's your story that in many ways, it seems so small. And yet look at what it led to. Now, to encourage everybody watching um, and listening, you said that you heard the Lord tell you to do these things. Let's talk a little bit about that. Because you know, sometimes when I meet somebody like you who's, who's a seer prophet, and you're having so many of these amazing encounters with God and his kingdom, it's easy for me to hear you say, the Lord told me, and I can jump to the conclusion that he either appeared to you and boomingly said, Kevin, here is yeah. the map, or that it was an audible voice. And maybe for you it was, but is it always that way? Or is it sometimes something much subtler like the rest of us tend to experience? Right, you have to remember, I am the rest of us. Right, true. So right. what happened was is that I, I couldn't discern God's voice at all. And so really? What, yeah, so what I knew was is that I, if I focused on what he had already spoken, which is the word of God, if I focused on that, I, I could actually have him speak to me at any one time. So I would actually open my Bible and start reading until I felt that God was speaking to me. Mm -hmm. I'd feel the anointing. And then I, that From was... From reading the word, yes. knowing that's him speaking to you right. through the logos, it would accelerate into the rhema. Yeah. And then you'd hear these kind of directions. Yes, so I developed that process in my life by, by letting the anointing come on by just reading the word. And I would just take a verse or two and I would think about it during the day. Now that grew into 
this time of praying in tongues, and this is what I found about praying in tongues, you're not going to get your answer while you're praying in tongues. Right. You're going to go get a shower and you're going to go to work and God's going to drop something in you. Right. And it's going to sound um, like it's audible, but it's not audible at all. It's a knowing. So when God, when I say God speaks to me, yes. it's a knowing because I trained my spirit to hear from God by the word of God and that anointing bearing witness. Right. Okay. Uh, it, was that clear? Because it, what, yeah. So if I'm I hearing develop, you correctly, I develop it. If I'm hearing you correctly, one of our keys for developing more of that intimacy, hearing the voice, is praying in tongues. Because as it says in Jude, that builds us up in our most holy faith. Yes. So it 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 it, it brings us into a place of increased faith, increased sensitivity. But then also, what was key was reading the Bible. So one of the ways we can train ourselves or or help ourselves learn to hear the rhema voice of God is by spending time in the Logos Word of God. Yes. Is that fair to what you learned? That, that would be what I would do. If I was if given, a, uh, given a job on a certain jet, they would give me a manual. And I would bury myself in that manual because that manual could save my life. Mm. That manual can make me a master at that airplane. But if I don't master the manual, I don't master the plane. Wow. So you have to master the manual, the God, what God gave us. And that is the word of God. And then you train your spirit and the, the anointing, that witness that you feel when, you, when the Holy Spirit comes in and ignites, it becomes rhema. Then that is God speaking to you. Well, then what happens is later, God started to visit me with with, I would have um, a situation at work where you wouldn't think that you'd feel God anointing. We'd be in an emergency. Okay. Or you shut down an engine and you're running on one engine or you have somebody who has a heart attack. Right. Okay. At that point, because of my training in the word of God and that and learning the anointing, yep. witnessing, that I was able to, to stay what we call in the spirit. I was able to stay in there in my relationship with God. Mm. to where I could hear God even in situations where you'd think you would get into a, the flesh or the mind and it would give you confusion or it would give you this, this uh, type of, 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 of uh, the, where your mind couldn't process, right? Okay. And you would hesitate. I didn't hesitate. I was able to, to in any situation, go by my spirit because I learned, now listen, I learned to respond to every situation from my spirit. From your spirit. And I, just so you know, I have a doctorate and I also uh, tested out with my IQ. When I came back from heaven, when I came back from Jesus, I increased over 50 points on oh my, my IQs. Goodness. Didn't you tell me yesterday that you also came back from heaven with the ability to play 18 instruments? That it you was four, play 14. 14. 14 but, but instruments. But I didn't know it. So your IQ went up 50 points, and you supernaturally received the ability to play 14 instruments. Yes, and this is this is just an after effect of being in His presence. But I saw when I was over there that the ability is actually inside us as a born again it, Christian. Yeah, every spiritual yeah. blessing has been given us. Everything pertaining to life and godliness is ours in Christ. Yeah. So everything we're talking about, and this is something I think it, it's good to discuss because if we don't get that, we can, we can get lied to by the enemy and trapped in religion. We think we have to work. Okay, I've got to pray in tongues for 10 hours a day to earn this and work. No, no, no. It's it, Reading the Bible and praying in tongues doesn't earn us any, anything. We're given everything. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's the way that we make our body and soul come more and more into agreement with that's the right. fullness that our born again spirit has. Is that, is that, is that? That's correct because um, while you're sleeping, just so you know, while you're sleeping, your body and your mind are having meetings without you and they're voting you off the island. That's what that, that oh, always happens. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so they, the body and the mind, they, they want to, to, to vote you off right. because see, they are left out of spiritual activity a lot of times. Yeah. Okay, so your mind, like Paul said, when we pray in the spirit, uh, our mind is not fruitful because it's spiritually discerned. So your spirit operates in the spirit because it's spirit to spirit. Mm -hmm. God is a spirit, he's not a mind. He's, right. he's not a body, right. he's a spirit. So right. our spirit, can communicate with God. But Jesus said that the flesh is weak. The spirit was willing, but the flesh was weak. Yes. So we have to, we have to, on this earth, we have to learn 
to, to have our first, like I did in emergencies in an airplane, I learned my initial thing had to be what was right, not what I felt at the mm -hmm. time out of fear. So you right. never, you have to learn to not respond out of fear. You learn how to enter his rest in all situations. Yes, and stay there and, 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 and buy property there and, and live and, there. And live there. Yeah. And do you think that's what he's getting really getting at when he talks about seek first the kingdom? Well, that's, that's amazing that you would mention that verse because I learned that the, the, the world, that Jesus showed me that the world system is set up for you to pursue wealth and to pursue success okay. and, and, and to succeed. And as, even as, as men, we, we have that in us to want to succeed and want to, uh, to mature and, and obtain, you yeah. know, because it's just in us to provide. Right. Okay. However, Jesus tells us that the way that you have to be uh, great in the kingdom is, is he wants you to unhook from it, unlatch from it, which means he says, he says you got to seek first the kingdom and all these things will be added to you. And so when I learned to seek his kingdom first, what, what happened was I seemed to lose at first the things that I was pursuing. Mm. And that's, that's where people start to fall apart with right. their Christianity because they wonder, like, well, God's going to take everything and then he's going to send me to Africa. Right. You know, and everybody thinks that. But what I found was, uh, and I'm telling you, that, and I, I have the proof of it, that, that, that financial, financial success found me and, is, and pursued me when I didn't pursue it. Right, because you, you had encounters with heavenly beings that actually gave you investment advice so that you could <laughs> yeah. prosper financially because yeah. let's face it, money is a tool. Yes. And God will bless us with money to use it as a tool and it's not money that's evil, it's the love of money that's evil. That's so right. God, is, God is delivering us, setting us free from any love of money, which really what that boils down to in my opinion is he's setting us free of getting our worth and value value from money, yes. our identity from money or yeah. possessions or wealth, but he wants to give us those things through a kingdom mindset so we can use them in the earth on his behalf. Right. And so Jesus, he actually told me that most people, he said, that's why it's hard for a rich man to get to heaven he's, because he did say that. But he said that because he said most people don't qualify for handling riches because he says um, you can have riches, but they can't have you. Oh, okay. So he said, I don't want to lose people. He said, if, if they prosper to the point where they can't handle it, I'll lose them. They'll, they'll, be, they'll be pulled away. Uh, That's what he told me. So he said, if you pass all your tests financially by, by pursuing God. So a lot of what's in us needs to be burned out of us. Right. But we don't know it, and then God has to go through that process. So that's why most people don't get used of God because they don't humble themselves under the mighty hand of God, okay. which is a scripture, you know. Yeah. And, and you humble yourself under his mighty hand. Then he said, God will promote you in due season. It's going to come. So I had to learn that. So actually, I did a job that I, that I despised mm -hmm. in order to get to where I'm at today, where I'm actually able to um, stand in... in preach the gospel yeah. in, in its fullness. And with signs and wonders following. Yes, Amazing because I got out of the happened. way. Right. But it took years. Right. But it seemed as though, and I just, I just want to encourage people, I just want to encourage you that Jesus may, may have the Holy Spirit take you in the opposite direction of where you think you're going. It'll seem like you're losing and you're giving more than you're receiving. But Jesus told me, he says, I've got to unhook people from the world, which means going in the opposite direction. So just be encouraged. The Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you right now. You let Jesus take that yoke upon you that Jesus talked about. You let Jesus put that yoke upon you and you learn of him. He's meek and humble and it's easy because he's going to do most of the work, but you need to learn his pace and his personality. And that's what it's all about is yeah. knowing his personality. Yeah. Jesus, I'll tell you, when I, when I met him, he was so he was a strong personality. He he's he's the kind of person that gets it done. Mm. But it's going to be his way. He never once asked me what I thought about about his hair, about how he does things. He doesn't. He didn't even ask for my opinion about anything. You know. <laughs> um, I want to hear more, but uh, uh, Jonathan reminded me in my ear, a producer yeah. reminded me in my ear, that um, we've been going for about a half hour and we're going to go a little bit longer here. Okay. But I want to make sure, because I, I want to keep pulling on this. What sure. you're sharing is amazing. But you have several books out. Yeah. I'm right now currently reading your very first one about heavenly visitations, yes. where you tell 
much more detail about that that 45 minute encounter with Jesus, correct? Yes. And then your most recent book, and I know there's many in between, is Heavenly Realms. And yes. and tell a little bit about this one. So and where everybody can get these from you and all the yes, other ones. Yes, they can as well. go to Kevin So that's K E V I N Z A D A I dot com. Yes. yes, you can go there, and then all the links are there. But they're okay. on Amazon and everywhere. Okay, so, great, great. But this book in particular, Heavenly Realms. It was. The Lord had me save, saved um, some things for me not to share. I actually shared only 20% of what Jesus told me in that visitation for the first book. Oh my gosh, So okay. over the next several years, according to the season we're in, he's gonna have me release more. This one was so very important because Paul, in Ephesians chapter one, verses 17 through 23, he prays for the Ephesians who were steeped in witchcraft. Right. So they were, um, in Book of Acts, it talks about all the books that they got burnt, you know, those spell books. Yes, right. Okay, so he said he prayed for them, and so the Lord told me to pray that prayer that Paul prayed for myself. So if you look that up and you pray that prayer every day, it talks about the eyes of your heart being enlightened and open, that the spirit of wisdom yes. and revelation. Yes. Okay, so that's what this book is about. Oh, cool, to have the eyes of wisdom and revelation opened for you. Right, and to pray from being seated with him in the heavenly realms which is Paul talked about later in Ephesians chapter two. Isn't that also where part of Paul's prayer is that we'll become more aware of the fullness of inheritance we've already been given? Yes, that we would know the inheritance that we've, that we've received. And I think that goes back to what we were talking about earlier, which yeah. is what God wants to do in yeah. all the things that he's, he's blessing us with, the process. Because we get excited about God, we get excited about his promises, but we rarely get excited about the processes of God. <laughs> and yet they're so important because they allow us to fully inhabit the promises which we already have. Yes. So I, 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 what I love about what you're sharing is you really are teaching us what he taught you, which is how to live from heaven in the earth because we're already there. We're already the overlap between heaven and earth. And sometimes I think we can get so hungry for that and, and we're thinking, there has to be some big key. And bottom line, the key is Jesus. Yes. We said yes to him, we're already there. And so often the way we activate that and agree with that and release that are really simple things. And you've been for year after year after year willing to do the really simple things. And now you're seeing these incredible manifestations from even when you were flying with the airline, you raised the dead on one of the flights. Share yeah. that story. Well, they can't, the, 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 the guy had a heart attack and he hadn't been breathing or had pulse for almost three to four minutes. And you're at altitude with, yeah. okay. And so we were gonna declare emergency and land, you know, but we've got to do something in between, but we could not get him to get a pulse or to have him breathe again. So while we're waiting for the next step, and that would be, we had to contact the captain who's gonna call for medical assistance on a phone, okay. uh, on a phone tap. So we're waiting for that. and. I thought, well, because I'm a Christian and I'm really a, I consider myself a minister, even though I, I was yeah. working a full time job, yeah. I asked the lady because she was sobbing. She and, and it, her husband was obviously dead because he was uh, real ashy, like oh. ashy, you know, yeah, no, right. no, no, no. Yep. Um, and of course, he'd been dead for three minutes at least. So, I, I asked her. I said, "Can I just pray for you all?" And I'll, I'll, can I pray for him because he was he a Christian? And she said, "Yeah," and, and, and she was too. Okay. So when I laid hands on his chest, where I would going to do CPR, um, the Spirit of God, instead of doing the nice little funeral prayer, um, out of my mouth said, come back in mm. the name of Jesus. And that authority that came out of my spirit was not from me because I didn't intend to say those words, but he woke up. Wow. And he walked off the airplane when we got on what the ground. What did he say when he came back? He didn't know. He didn't know. No, and see, and, that, and to be honest with you, when you die, you, you're not told how you died. Well, Jesus never told me how I died. Really? No, I found out, I had to figure it out myself when I came back. I had to figure it out through, like, a reverse engineer my thought process and figure out what happened because he didn't tell me because it, it was, to me, I was being promoted, so they just focused on that. When you were yeah. there with him in, in this, this heavenly realm, did you want to come back? No, I did not. I wondered about that because no. it must be amazing. No, it, just being in his presence, you know, I felt safe around him and I felt value. He mm. valued me and he understood me. Okay. So I understood that I missed, I missed out on the earth walking in the fullness of God because I didn't have that revelation of those two things. Okay, all right. And so the, I, he, when he asked me to come back, he said, it's all extra credit because you have finished your race. And he said, um, you can't fail. He said, he actually said, you cannot fail. Wow. If you go back, I will, I will make it 
it'll be so rigged in your favor that you will not fail. And what happened was, is when he sent me back, he just wanted me to come back and tell my story, but I didn't, wasn't allowed right away. But he wanted me, he had me sending, he had sending me to different people. He would tell me, and I would see these, I saw the first 15 when I was in heaven. He said, here's the first 15 that you're going to be sent to. Well, I met those over the next 20 years. I knew their names. Sometimes I would call them by their name and they said, I haven't told you my name yet. Oh my goodness. So he would tell me ahead of time, these people are destined for you to talk to because they're going to be rerouted by your words and they're going to finish right now because I'm sending you to them. So okay. that went on for the first 20, then when he released me to share my story, right. now it's worldwide. Right. Yes, it is. But it really, the thing that you have to take away from this is that I was in my future, but it was God's now. Right. Because he's the great I am. It's yes. always present tense yeah. with God. So he showed me that my my the prayer requests that I would pray, they were a stack of, of sheets about this high. Okay. It was they were already signed by him and they were signed by me. And these were prayer requests you'd already prayed or ones you're going to pray in the quote unquote future? That I had not prayed yet. Wow. Okay. And he said, I'm looking at your future and it's my now. He said, I've already signed everything that you're ever going to ask of me. He said, there's no one up here limiting you. Mm. Well, that kind of changes you because then you're, then I realized I wasn't operating in the fullness, but it was because I didn't discern my value for this generation, my life. I didn't mm. discern my value. And I didn't feel safe down here, but I was really safe because literally my spirit's always in the secret place with God. And I needed to allow my body and my mind to come in line with that. And that's what this life's all about. Okay. Yes. And right. So then, right. Yeah. And then the other thing that I feel like I should say is, is that unforgiveness mm -hmm. is one of those things that will keep you out. Keep you out in what way? I mean, it doesn't keep us out of our salvation. It keeps us out of manifesting heaven in the earth? Yeah, or, it okay. keeps you out of the manifestation because it ties your, it puts your soul in a position. That makes sense. That short, it short circuits the communication. So okay. you, you, uh, you have to release a person and it's more for you than it is that person mm -hmm. because see the person who does you wrong, they don't get away with it. The benefit of forgiveness is you release the file to the court so God could take care of it. Ah. So I, for, forgiveness. So if you're not forgiving, you're holding on to not only the offense, but the thing so it can't be released to God. To yeah, you have to give the file over to the court. And also because of that offense, it prevents you from operating in the supernatural. And I'm just, I'm just being honest with you. Yeah. I can't emphasize it enough that Jesus, when he said, when you're speaking to mountains and you have uh, ought, you know, unforgiveness, he said, drop what you're doing and go and, and take care of that. Right. That's why he said that in the same breath as speaking with mountains. Oh, okay. It's because it's a hindrance to your walk and your faith. Well, and and the Lord's prayer that he teaches us in, is to forgive others as we are forgiven. So yeah. that's not a quid pro quo. If you forgive others, I'll forgive you. It's that you are forgiven. So as you forgive others the same way I forgiven you, it, it gives you more freedom to operate in the fullness of what you already have. So truly, he's holding nothing back from us, but sometimes we are holding ourselves back. Yes, and it all has to do with the revelation of the red letters. Jesus, Jesus told me. He said, "He said I've given you enough." The red. You letters, mean when he, when he speaks in the Bible? Yes. Okay. He was actually like the red letters, and they all are. We're all accountable for him. They all are are the true him. He he quoted himself to me for 45 minutes. Oh my gosh! But it was so powerful, and I realized that the red letters were all we need down here. I didn't need to die and come back, but he sent me back as a sign and a wonder. Yeah. But to tell people they don't need to wait till they get to heaven to do something for God. And yes. To, yes. That they can learn and they can have revelation. Right on. Right okay, now. I Kevin, I could talk to you all day. I've been talking to you for two days, and I know everybody <laughs> watching is pulling on this and so thrilled. Um, but we do need to wrap up, but before we do, two requests. One, if there's anything else you feel to share about that encounter with Jesus and the, the, the secrets he revealed about living from the kingdom in the earth, and then secondly, to look into your camera and, and pray whatever you feel to pray, whether it's impartation, revelation, whatever it is, um, to release to the audience. Okay. Well, first of all, the one thing I want to tell okay. you is, is that the... the the th other thing that I saw that a lot of people need to know about is to understand the demonic on okay. this earth. The reason why is, is they appeal to the flesh. 
and they appeal to your will. Okay, so what I saw was enough to, for me not to want to come back. Oh. I actually got to see into that world. But I want to encourage your, your viewers to understand this, is that what the de those devils don't anticipate is that you resist them in any way. In other words, if, you, if they push you and you push back, that's a surprise to them. Okay, it's like punching a bully in the nose. Yeah, they don't expect okay. A, pr okay. a Christian to be bold enough to say, how dare you do that to a child of God? Also, like David to Goliath. Yes, yes. Who are you to come against the... Yeah, it, okay. it, 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 it stuns them because they've conditioned people and Christians to not respond. But if you do, they, 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 get, they get stunned. So that, that I wanted to share That's that with awesome. them so that people know that I want you uh, to, 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 I want the people to know to push back. So when the enemy comes at us like yeah. that, we're not failing. It's actually an opportunity to, to push back against the enemy. You have to because if, if you're encountering resistance, it's because you are part of Jesus Christ's ministry. There we go. Okay. That's awesome. Thank you. That's very empowering and encouraging because sometimes people feel even when they're tempted or when they're attacked, it's, it's they're failing. And we need to learn to see this is a great opportunity. And the way you phrase that is awesome. Yeah. We can we can push back and the pushing back is taking territory and defeating the enemy. Yes. Thank you for that. And then if you would please look into the, your camera and and release, bless, prophesy whatever you feel to do, my friend. Thank you, Robert. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for everyone watching right now. I pray and I thank you, Father, that the Holy Spirit is visiting right now by the anointing and the power of God and by the authority of God. Right now, I address every evil spirit that's hindering and, and, and harassing the viewers right now. In the name of Jesus, I break your power, Satan, and I drive you out right now. Just receive your deliverance right mm -hmm. now in the name of Jesus. And I also tell you by the Spirit of God that what you've heard from the other realm, take it to heart and listen and, and hear what God is saying to you because your days of torment, your days of losing and being confused are over. The Lord is telling me there's a turnaround that's happened right now by the Spirit of God. You've heard things you might not have heard before. The Spirit of the Lord is telling you this is your time and your season for the turnaround. Take it to heart. The Lord's saying to many of you that you have been through preparation, you've passed your tests, and now it's time for you to see the fullness of the plan of God. Your destiny is right in front of you in the name of Jesus. That's what the Lord's saying right now. Amen. Amen. I love when you read from the scripture like that when they descend in front of you. Thank you You're for welcome. declaring that. I want you to hear that. Your time is now. If you're hungry for more of this revelation because we barely scratched the surface, mm. I want to remind you to go to either Kevin's website or to Amazon and get his books. These are this is simply the first one and the most recent one, but there's all sorts of great revelation. I started this one last night, and, and I'm hoping to finish it tonight. I, 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 I have lots of books stacked up. I rarely have time to read, but I was so excited to get into this. Thank you for your obedience, your love for God, your obedience to God, your willingness to serve Him. We didn't even get to get into the whole thing about how He kept you hidden for so very long, and you were absolutely fine with that. And now that He's bringing you forward, you're serving him, his kingdom, and the body so well. I want to say thank you for that, Kevin. Thank you, Robert. God bless you. And thank each of you for joining me again this week on Heroes Arise. Don't forget, September 23rd through the 30th, join us in Cambodia for Frontliners Outreach. You're going to be amazed at how God uses you there. And then, of course, October 5 through 7, we've got our next man camp coming up, and I want to see you there. God bless you guys, and we'll see you on Heroes Arise again soon.